So, welcome back to the Card Crunchers podcast. This is episode two. I'm Pokey Mike, and I'm here with Pokey King. And we will be talking about all things trading card related. So, what have you been up to the last week or two? You've been picking anything up? Have you got anything new into your collection this week? Yeah, um, I had a couple of PSA returns, which Ooh. came very quickly. We had. I had early Feb and late Feb both come at the same time. Yeah. So, nice. which was great. So, PSA really are sort of moving unbelievably quickly back to, you know, post pre COVID yeah. levels now, really, honestly. Yeah. Um, obviously, they've announced the price is just the standard price now is going to be $15. It's not special anymore. Yeah. So, to see. That's, that's fantastic. A lot of people, I think, my, I mean, we, I, I had a conversation actually. And we were going to wait to sub more until sort of the next special was announced. And then a couple of days later, they're like, right, everything's $15 now. Yeah, so so, so good to see. Like, And the turnaround yeah. times being what they used to be at this point. It's just, it's like so refreshing. After It was so long that backlog was there that you kind of just got used to not grading cards anymore. <laughs> yeah, it... Well, I mean, some people waiting two years, really. Yeah. And some people are still waiting for submissions back. Um, but yeah, I think you know PSA definitely have have improved all of their services. I think knowing that the standard price is fifteen dollars now makes me think that their specials, which they'll still do, are going to be even cheaper. Maybe yeah. twelve dollars specials. Um, yeah. It'll be interesting to see whatever happens. They can clearly. Um, keep up the demand so it's only good for collectors and people grading honestly yeah i think that was it last week as well that they showed off on instagram that like new part of their application or apple website where you can reveal your cards you can see all the progress and before yeah before you get them there's like a reveal button and the card flips around shows you the grade so they're yeah they're quite clearly they're, they're, yeah, they're doing a lot, let's be honest, like especially compared to other companies like BGS and stuff uh, at the moment who seem to be falling behind with any improvements whatsoever, don't they? Uh, but yeah, yeah if you... Beckett. Sorry, go on. Beckett are definitely struggling in, in sort of every area, honestly. I think we've seen move the labels sort of dropping down. We've seen... Turnaround times, I mean, as you know as well, as well as I do, aren't near what they quote now. Um, and their communication as well is poor. Their pop reports, just all around generally, they seem to not have any interest in improving their services. Yeah, it's strange to see that they're just sort of not stepping stepping up the game. But, um, yeah, it just... Uh, from from seeing how many cards have been graded as well uh, it's just it's just unfortunate because a lot of other tcgs do like to use beckett for grading but we'll see i guess we'll see what happens with that we'll see uh, i know psa are, are accepting a lot more than they used to as well so i mean they could yeah. end up taking potentially that business but let's be honest we all know that the main reason of beckett is their higher stricter grading black labels and things like that that is kind of that's what separates them that's their selling point so um potentially that might always be there slightly but yeah it, it depends on the tcg as we spoke about before but have you picked picked up anything bought anything recently this this since the last episode yeah flesh and blood mostly um yeah. i picked up i've been i've been sort of card market is great it's the European version of TCG player. And I think people don't really use it for Pokemon. No. It's not people will buy off Facebook or off Discord or like, you know, eBay, obviously. Um, but with card market, it's obviously the condition. They just, there's no photos. It's just listings yeah. of cards. So it will be a certain specific card. Then it will have all the prices for all of the sellers and how many they have in stock. And it's a lot of stores are on there as well so the stock isn't always live so it is a bit of a risk i've I've received cards even recently that were described as near mint that weren't but it kind of sort of comes with it i suppose near mint 
is a very vague term yeah for cards honestly like they can say pack fresh but they the cards do come with dents and, yeah. and with whitening on them for the pack so i've been picking up quite like large amounts of the first three set singles like some sellers were selling 15 20 of a card so i'd sort of just buy them all because they're a lot of mar sort of like less than a pound each yeah and with flesh and blood the pull rates for super rares are about four per box usually and majestics are one to two per box so to me it seems a bit silly not to pick up as many as i can yeah, really now yeah before i get out of print the, well, are out. you buying them from european stores because i've been on there only once and it was for pokemon and it was like two years ago and it was when i was after black and white legendary treasure booster packs i don't know why or how i ended up on there but i ended up buying some from card market i noticed that it was mainly like european places i didn't really see much uk on there and i haven't been on there since have you yeah is it what's it like now is it is there any uk stores or is it still mainly just european market there is a lot of uk stores yeah i think generally i clear out the uk stores because there's obviously (laughs) no import so yeah the amount of singles that I can buy now for specific cards I have to buy from Europe now. Yeah. Because there's, there's nothing left for sale on there. You've already got them all. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, yeah I, I've sort of... I've bought... I think with it, they've been so cheap for so long. Yeah. And a lot of people... the num- I've been sort of... I keep tabs on it, really. And the seller will have the same card up for months, and people aren't buying them, so... I look at that and think, well, you know, I know how hard these cards are to pull. I know that these sets are out of print. They're out of circulation. They're very hard to find boxes now. To me, it just seems like a no-brainer to be picking these cards up. Yeah. So that's what I I think. And again, they're really cheap as well. So I've just been picking up loads um, pretty much every single week now. There's not... I can't think of a week that's passed in the last... 12 months where I haven't been buying a couple of hundred singles what, from, from Flesh Market? and Blood, honestly. Yeah, I don't... Obviously, they're not... Most of them aren't flashy cards, so I don't yeah. really post about them. And I don't sort of mention it within the community of the Discord because if you tell people you're buying large cut sort of amounts of cards, people automatically sort of have their back up about it. But yeah, yeah. they've been there for a while. Anybody could buy them. So I I like the cards. And I'm, the plan is to have um a, du- a double set of binder pages for every single majestic and super rare nice from the first three sets yeah so i just need more binders essentially so but... how, f- how far along are you on that do you think pretty close yeah nice won't be long then pretty... no i think i'm up to about five thousand majestics now <laughs> jesus um <laughs> Yeah, it's to, and you think some and a lot of those are early sets where it's one per box. Yeah. So it's yeah, and some of them are cheap, some of them are expensive, but the prices have gone up obviously over time. And yeah, but we'll see what happens. At the end of the day, I like the art of the cards, so it makes no makes no odds to me really. Yeah, if you like them, like who cares? Doesn't matter if you want to collect multiples of them. Yeah, I've done it with random Pokemon cards that I really like that Umbreon promo yeah. from evolving skies we've got pages of it for some reason it was like a two pound card i just really like it's the card thing, yeah. yeah yeah it's really nice picking stuff up did you have you used card market before like um like for pokemon have you used it for pokemon at all yeah i used it a few years ago uh sort of 20 maybe 2019 i think yeah when i was trying to find like ex era packs and stuff but obviously they're going to be weighed on that. And they they're, they do sell a lot of foreign language packs on there. Card market is good if you've got a trusted seller. But yeah. I've had packages purchased from the like boxes and stuff that I bought. And they've been opened by customs. And the sellers aren't very helpful. Yeah. So it is a bit of a risk. But yeah. It, yeah. You know, card market is great. It has its place. Um, for Flesh and Blood specifically, it is probably the main store for people to use within Europe. Yeah, yeah. I guess, uh, I wonder if, obviously, t- eBay bought TCG Player. Card Market is yeah. essentially the European TCG Player at the end of the day. 
I do wonder yeah. what happens if eBay managed to bring TCG player to the UK and to European countries. I'd imagine that might be quite tough for card market if that happens. But yeah, I guess I guess that's way off because they've only just taken over TCG player, I think, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point though. I think I mentioned it before. I actually said about whether or not they'd buy card market. Yeah, potentially. But they could just bring TCG player to Europe and mm. it probably would eventually phase out card market. Honestly, I think card market is only big because it's the only one yeah. that we have. Yeah. Um they card market also interesting. They grade their own they grade cards as well. Oh, I don't know that? if you know about them. what? Yeah, they grade cards. Um I've seen the labels, they're not great, but Oh oh sorry, they... I thought I thought you meant they were grading like raw cards that they sometimes get through the site. They, no, they, they actually... actually they grade cards as okay. well. What's they're that? actually a grading <laughs> something too. Card market grading. Oh okay, I've never seen that. Yeah, you wouldn't have seen it. And <laughs> honestly, you don't need to see it. I mean yeah. I'll after this I'll show you actually yeah. the, the labels because they are they are interesting, but I mean, yeah. I, I guess they probably started that when everyone else tried to in 2020, yeah. right? When they were like, oh, PSA aren't grading, let's start a grading company. Yeah. 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 It... And it's... yeah. I mean, we all, knew, yeah. we all knew what was going to happen with that as soon as PSA reopened and it's back to normal like it is now. Cheap and affordable, comes in about two months. Why, why would you use any of the any of the others at this point? No, I agree. I I tried. I used MGC and MGC were really good. Um, hats off to them. They were a fantastic service. It was they had a monthly subscription where you could pay. You know, it was twenty nine ninety nine a month, and you got five cards graded. Yeah. And right. turnaround times were about what PSAs are now, but obviously back then PSA was sort of fifty to hundred pound a card, and they yeah, were, yeah, it no. wasn't. So you needed other options, and MGC. Did very well with that. Their slabs are the same as PSAs, but obviously they have their own label. I I think MGC are still going very strong. They have their core fan base. There's a lot of people that, even though PSA have opened up, they are collectors that entered the, the hobby in 2020. Yeah. And they've never known anything else but using MGC. So they still will you probably use MGC till they kick till they essentially maybe stop but honestly i think mgc out of all the grading companies in the uk are going to be the one that lasts yeah yeah i think um yeah there is potential in terms of like a gap in the market for a uk grading company whether that's ace grading mgc just simply because there is you know if we want to grade with psa or becker you do have to send your cards to america back yeah normally using a middleman you can do it without them but you've got to sort out all the imports and risk yourself so i think there's definitely yeah there's definitely a place for uk specific grading uh until perhaps psa make an official move over not like they did with the whole ludkins stuff but i think yeah one day down the line it's, it, it, it would make sense for them to offer a service in the uk or in europe whether they just forward them on for you i don't yeah i don't know yeah i agree so i saw you open some disney 100 i, I saw some yeah. uh nice nice views on that video it seems to be doing well doesn't it how did you yeah, find I, the set i really enjoyed it i think it's probably one of the best card game sets in a long time i would say it's definitely up there in terms of what has been come out the last couple of years i think the pixar set was fantastic yeah. the marvel set was really great this is kind of just the next level it's yeah it's so much fun i i took the cards to my nan because she wanted she when i mentioned that i was going to be open some she wanted to have a look yeah and watching her go through the cards and she was just in awe honestly oh, she really? was it was a constant wow these are honestly these are so, these are so pretty like yeah. these are cards that people have made and so i i gave a couple to my aunt actually because they uh, were stitch cards so my nan went and visited her this weekend so yeah. my aunt messaged me this morning actually saying that she wanted to get them framed when she's out of hospital oh, so nice. 
so they're nice but yeah disney obviously i I know that you've opened up a plethora of boxes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's fun. How was that for you? Yeah, I love it. I think, yeah, the card, like you said, the cards, they're, they're just the the quality of them is just something else. It's on on par with what they did with Pixar. The just the fact that the SRs look so nice just means that you can open a box, even if you don't get an SP. I know I chased after it an SP for ages, I opened lots of boxes, but if you were just one person buying a box and you get an SR, well, you don't, I think you you either get two SRs and a hundred rare, or three SRs and a hundred rare, which is to get four pulls out of a box, four textured cards, is really, really nice. And the fact that all of those cards just look so nice. The, the quality on them is just so high. Um, I think, Obviously, with Weiss Schwarz and when they do sets from anime, sometimes the cards are just screenshots, right? Sometimes yeah. there's a couple of odd cards in the sets that are low quality, not that sharp. They've literally just taken a screen grab from the anime and you're like, oh, what? The? It just looks out of it's, place yeah. be- between the cards that they've like hand, not hand drawn, but they've made for the set. And then there's just a random kind of blurry screen grab. Uh, but obviously, Disney didn't have that. Every card is literally just crisp and and really really nice. So, yeah, I I I, th- I thought it was a really nice set. It's just um, yeah, they just didn't manage to to quite print enough for the initial release. But there is a wave two coming in about a day. Probably when this is out, it's it's probably already happened. But that wave yeah. two goes to the stores that pre-ordered and then got their allocations cut so it's not oh, okay, like yeah. it's not like you can go online and, and order it at retail like it's it's just there'd be a few more boxes hitting the market and the price i'd imagine will pretty much be the same there's there's yeah. not going to be like a huge restock until you know they re yeah if they reprint it six months down the line that you know it would be a proper reprint you might be able to pre-order at retail if you're lucky but yeah, as a set, really nice. I'm really happy with it. Yeah, I think I hope that they do reprint it because I would like the opportunity to open more. Yeah, I think even in six months' time, it, the fact that the cards are so really beautiful, honestly, as you said about pulling the SRs and the hundred rares are just they really, really are. And I think I would like to get quite a few of those graded myself. I think I've got my own plans with the set. I think. I'd like to get a copy of the Stitch SP and then uh, another SP that my nan likes, and I'd like to get them both graded and give them as a gift. Oh, nice, yeah. Because, yeah, I think the cards just absolutely, they really are. I, If anybody's watching this and they haven't sort of bought any yet, I understand that the £120, what that is for a box now, is a very high price considering that's not that's quite above retail. Yeah. But for probably within the next six months, you're not going to find a box cheaper. So if you do want one, I would suggest buying one now. And I would suggest just opening it, honestly. Really enjoy it because every single card, whether it's a rare, double rare, SR, 100 rare, or even just a common, the cards are really, honestly, so beautiful. Yeah, what I and see it, a lot. Sorry, go on. What, what I would say as well is that is there's not many other card games or any other Weiss sets, as you said, with obviously they do screen grabs, where you can look for every card and probably enjoy the art for every single card you see. Yeah, I think, yeah, actually, I just remembered there are a few cards in it that are screen grabs, but... It, it it's only a few compared to other white sets is normally quite a lot i just remembered there was kind of a leader and stitch screen grab card that i remember but yeah as you said like all, all all of the other cards the majority of the set just even commons they just look really really nice um and and i've got messages about people asking uh, i've noticed this a lot people just want to collect like a subset within it which is why it's yeah. so good because it appeals to so many people you you might just like lilo and stitch and that's it and that's fine because there's an sp there's an sr there's a double rare there's a 100 rare you can literally there's four cards um three of which are textured 
that you can buy and i think i've seen people posting it like when you get like a subset of those cards so you, let's say you've got all four of the lilo and stitch cards and they sort of post a picture of them all together it looks really really nice it looks like a, it's like a yeah. mini little mini set that you can collect and i think a lot of people are doing that a lot of people that have asked me for cards they want specific cards from certain series and i think yeah together they, they do go really really nice yeah there's there's not really any other card game honestly where that's the case as yeah. well because obviously the the art is so nice there's it's definitely it appeals there's just so much to appeal yeah. to people honestly and i think that's why it'll probably go down as such a great set in years to come yeah oh, i mean i know you said you wanted a reprint of it i i would be extremely surprised if they don't reprint it like it's it would just it wouldn't make any financial sense if they if they don't reprint it the only thing that i potentially could hold that that back would be the licensing that the only thing is that disney might not want it reprinted six months down the line because of Lorcana or something like that like yeah that's the only thing i could see but i still still would be very surprised if it didn't get reprinted well, we can hopefully. I know Lorcana's coming out in the summer, I believe. So it's not too far away now, honestly. We're getting yeah. closer. Yeah. They're releasing more cards. People are talking about the gameplay. There is a lot, a lot has been said about Lorcana. I try to keep a little bit involved. I think I'm, I'm in a couple of groups on Facebook and I sort of do see people. I know I've heard things about stores wanting, because obviously they can't order unless you're actual brick and mortar now. I think some stores have kind of turned against it a little bit yeah. and they're trying to influence people against the card game. So Lorcana is the, I don't think I've been so not just excited, but intrigued and kind of interested to see what a set release is like. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's a different, what was the, do you remember what the manufacturer company was for this set? Yeah. They it's uh, Ravensburger. So the, the company that make puzzles. Yeah. So they've never, done a tcg before have they i think they have actually oh, okay. but not anything that's like massive at yeah. all this is definitely their first like big tcg launch yeah because i've uh, i mean i'll be honest i really don't know that much about Lorcana. um if it comes to it you know I, maybe if i can I'll, I'll purchase one box to open but i haven't really done any research like i'm not i'm not investing in Lorcana is what i want to say i yeah. guess and if i was then i would do more research and find out more information about it i'll probably just open yeah. it if i can get a box just because it's disney and it'd be fun and you know it's always nice to open something new every now and then but yeah it seems like from a few things i've heard that it, i keep seeing things pop up saying that it's not very like it's not playable like have you heard anything about that? Yeah, I've I've heard people of I think people play testing it and stuff, and they've got because with all car games when they release until the actual release, they generally you can download yourself and print them off and play. That's yeah. what a lot of people have been doing for years with card games. But I think a lot of people kind of play tested this a little bit and realised it doesn't it doesn't really work that well. I don't know much more into it. As I said, like I'm not. I'm not investing in this card game either. Yeah. I will get some. I know I definitely will get some for the release because I like Disney and I I like the art style that they've gone with. So I'll definitely get some. And I might pick up a starter deck and kind of see how that goes. But I have seen quite a lot of traction moving towards the fact that it doesn't play very well. Yeah. So we've still got a couple of months till release. So I don't know if there's going to be anything that is going to be done until then obviously we got this announced last year so the hype for this card game has been building for a while now yeah obviously i, I mean i i haven't played any tcg so in terms of playability i'm sure you'll have more of an idea and understanding when it comes out like if you get a starter deck and sort of look at it but i mean it's never that never that promising when before it's out you're hearing things like oh it doesn't seem that playable yeah I don't, I don't know 
And I guess, yeah, uh, for me, it doesn't really matter in terms of playability, but I guess if you're considering investing and things like that, I mean, it's got the weight of Disney behind it. So I think regardless, people like people are going to buy it, people are going to collect it, even if it's not yeah. playable, like, they won't care. Um, I guess, yeah, may- maybe something we can touch on, speaking of playability in card games uh there was quite a lot of kickstarter tcgs recently <laughs> in the last year yes. or so oh kickstarter tcgs yeah we i know we got involved in some ourselves i think yeah. um some better than others of course grand archive the kickstarter came out uh recently we've got uh sorcery as well which is coming out very soon i think shipments have started happening now which is which is delayed i think in terms of like Kickstarter, teacher, I think Grand Archive has done it well. The cards look great. They're, it can be played. People are playing. They did a lot of events uh, before the Kickstarter stuff came out. The big release, the Ultra Edition, is out, I think, at the end of this month or the start of next month. Yeah. So that they, they kind of had the Kickstarter release and the actual release quite close together, which I think... A lot of people didn't like it at the start, but I think it's a great move because it gives people the chance to go, I want these cards, I can't get them. Oh, but the, the actual release comes out yeah. in a month. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think a, a quick release like that keeps the interest going. You're like, you know, if you come into it slightly late and you can't get any, it's like, I'll oh, just wait a few weeks and then, and then get the cards. Yeah. I haven't really been following Grand Archive. I got one booster box. It's still sealed in my cupboard. Um, I like to just hold on to sealed things. I think it's really cool just in case there's not many of them down the line and you've got this thing sealed for years. Most people end up just open, opening them or selling them. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I haven't... I, I, I saw when it did come out that, yeah, it, it was doing well. The cards look really, really nice. And, yeah, it seems to be promising for that one. Obviously, we've got... We both bought like a little bit of a Cora when it was first. Yeah. I, I, was it Cora the, one of the first? Oh, no, sorry. It was obviously MetaZoo. Everyone knows MetaZoo. Yeah. But after that, I think a Cora was the next one, wasn't it? A Cora was, yeah, apart from a couple of small ones, but Cora was the first big one after that that was everyone was talking about. Yeah. Obviously, it was hype. It was, it was a British card game as well. We saw a lot of certain people on instagram and facebook's uh pumping it they were saying that it was going to be the great you know the next big thing yeah then obviously the red flag started creeping in when they were constantly selling promos on their website and i know that we had that conversation back then where we were yeah. like the cars look nice and i know we both got some ourselves but we were yeah. both looking at that and going they haven't <laughs> even released the set yet and they're constantly doing promos this seems a bit strange yeah and it was um, promos for like 10 pound a card so it did yeah. seem like a money grab but it was and it was i guess the worst part is like you've just done a kickstarter that raised god knows how much money yeah why why do you i like yeah why do you need to do this and i know a lot of people responded like oh it's just to you know so people can get cards before it comes out i mean it doesn't need to be 10 pound a promo right no I know it's not Pokemon, but you look at Pokemon, you can get a blister pack for £12. You get three booster packs and it comes with a free promo. So it's like, yeah. I think yeah. at the start, we were both excited. Like, the artwork is kind of like an anime style. It was up my street, so I was happy to pick some up. But as time went on and it led up to that release, by the time it... I'm trying to think now. I think a month, at least a month before release, I was already decided that once this comes out i'm selling it i don't yeah. I, I, I don't see any future there's too many things that have happened in terms of red flags they did not only did they do the promos which i think on their own if it was just that if, if they just did the promos and just sold the promos and that was the only red flag i'd be like yeah fair enough whatever you needed some money or you wanted to put cards out there and make some money on the side at the same time fair enough but yeah so many other things happened along the road they had what was it the test do you remember the test hollows yeah so they advertised i think on instagram that you could buy the prototype test hollows on the back of the card it's got test printed on it 
And obviously you'd assume that the test hollows were already made for testing. <laughs> but these were actually, I th from what I remember, these were like print to pre-order. <laughs> yeah. For test So they hollows. were made as promos. And yeah. they, I think with the core is, I've spoken to a lot of people and I've spoken to people that were quite close with the, the crate of Acora. And it seems to be that it was somebody that had, he had some direction, but he had no experience and he didn't yeah. really know where it was. Yeah. He didn't, it was a, it was a cash grab, honestly. He obviously, he started sending his own graded cards as well. Oh, like Acora yeah, was sending their graded cards. That was another one. And I was like, and I remember saying like, this is a bit weird. And they're like, oh, but they're going to give one away. And I was like, He's grading and selling his own cards before the release is out. Yeah. This uh, is not right. Like, this is not good. It wasn't even the fact. I, I think I completely forgot about that. So thanks for bringing that up. But I don't think it was even the fact that they were selling it. Obviously, that's worse. But I think even if they were just grading their own cards and keeping them, yeah. I would still be like, what? No. No, like that. You can't, you can't grade your own cards. Like, even to collect them... I mean, if you do that, don't post it. Like, yeah. I, I think that's such, that was a huge red flag. Why, you know, you're in control of the printing of these cards. You could handpick the potential black labels out of your production line, right? That, yeah. is, that is very bad insider type of moves, right? You don't, you don't grade it. You don't grade it and sell it. Like, that is, yeah. That is. Yeah, that's insider. That is literally insider trading. Yeah, yeah. That's not even been in the circle. That's being the circle. And I yeah. think, yeah, it's so many red flags. And of course, after the race, they did that video, that god awful video that looked like it was made by a five year old on a computer. <laughs> the the RuneScape trailer. Yeah, is what the I RuneScape. Like to think Rune, of it as. I that was the nail in the coffin. I remember yeah. us seeing that and going. What? What the fuck? What the fuck is what this? Is that? Honestly, I remember us seeing. I, I, we were in the group chat, and I, everybody, everybody agreed, and we were just like, "Nah, come on, <laughs> they can't think this is good, surely." Yeah, and like, if that was made, fair enough. Uh, don't post it. It looks terrible. That just shows your level of quality, like. Quality acceptance, I guess, if you're happy with how that video came yeah. out. Um, for me, it was the obviously it was like blocky 3D models. I think there was like arms that were just square. But I, I think the thing that topped it off in that video for me was just when the camera, like the, they <laughs> they clearly didn't know how to make a camera like smoothly pan in a direction. So like the camera went forward and then it just went sideways <laughs> and then forward yeah. again. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean that was yeah. bad yeah so, so so much happened with that and i think recently did they i think another set came out or no not another set uh, something was selling booster boxes are selling for like 10 pound that was the actual release of the set so oh, okay started but the actual like actual release of it yeah the boxes are selling for like 10 pound each so it's dead in the ground at this point let's be honest yeah, I know they did a partnership with eBay and they've got an eBay oh, yeah. promo product. And I know they're at London Card Show as of day, the day we're filming this. Actually, they're there now. So I think, honestly, a quorum might last another 12 months. It might last another 24 months. But long term, it's I, it's not a card game that I, I've no. still got the Kickstarter decks and play mats. And yeah. I I can't sell them. I, I, I've listed them up for £10 each and they still won't sell. There's just no one so, buying or collecting it. No, yeah. it's no, and I know we know a few names that were. They had very large positions of Acora, and they've either lost a lot of money on it or they've dumped it all. Yeah, but they were very loud with the pump and dump for Acora, and they haven't. They've barely said a thing since. So yeah, that just tells you. You see these accounts, and I'm not calling out anyone specifically because. We'll, of course, share stuff, and we might make jokes and stuff like that, but we're not... Our anger isn't to, like, pump and dump anything. It's yeah. just generally curiosity or sharing stuff that we think looks really cool. 
but there are accounts out there that sole purpose is just a pump and dump and i wouldn't trust the stuff that they post all the time because it's, it's quite it's obvious. very misleading yeah yeah and it's very obvious fomo we know is a very big leader as to why people buy stuff and i just think that people people got caught a lot with with metazoo with some of like the the second prints of the cryptic nation and the other sets but yeah just be careful with sort of what you get involved in the new card games yeah because obviously not all of them can survive there's not a place for no for nine thousand card games unfortunately and I I guess we we were both aware of Metazoo when that was coming out. I know why I I didn't bother getting into it. Uh, You know, let's be honest, I could have spent a thousand, two thousand and invested in that card game and probably made a lot of money from that, but I chose not to. How come you didn't want to get into Metazoo? Well, so we've got, obviously I collect loads of card games. I I think I've collected yeah. pretty much every card game that's come out. I've or I've tried, I've opened it at least. So there's not a card game that has come out where I've gone, I'm not touching it until I try the product myself. So I did actually um I did have a couple of packs of the MetaZoo the 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 very first edition set opened. Oh did you? So I didn't even I didn't EPR really Gaming did a box yeah, EPR gaming did a box break. Like I think it must have been like the week before prices skyrocketed. Yeah. And he was doing packs for a very reasonable price. And I saw that and I thought they were literally like retail price he was yeah. selling the packs at. So he did, I think he did a box break and I think I got like maybe three or four packs. Um, and I received the cards, obviously, and then I sort of felt them. They felt very flimsy. They felt like they were made by a child. And the art wasn't, honestly, I just didn't think the art was just very... I know there's people out there, I know that people like that cryptic sort of law, and I'm not sort of bashing anybody that likes um, the law of it, because I yeah. can understand why people would like, not saying that like Metazoo is a perfect card game, but I can understand why people would like the law and the art, because yeah. it definitely has its own sort of style. Yeah, it does, yeah. And I I had the cards in my hand, and it was just a no for me. I, th- yeah. I thought that everything that's was around the card game at the time all at the time obviously at the time it was just pure pump and dump and it just felt a bit it just felt a bit wrong and i sort of felt the cards and i was like this isn't for me i sold the foils um to anthony in the other group yeah i sold them to him because he was collecting matters at the time oh, yeah. and i've still got the non-foils now uh I, they're in a drawer somewhere yeah. um but yeah and then it, that for me was just my sort of tapping out of i tried it i looked at it and i want to give it a chance i don't want to be like oh but you haven't even opened it, so how can you say you don't like it yeah that's fair and enough i yeah. did yeah and it wasn't for me and you know metazoo obviously has had a lot of that was the card game that flesh and blood got put in the same yeah. category as that unfortunately early on because even though fab came out before metazoo obviously Fab came out in 2019, late 2019, obviously the pandemic hit and Alpha came out with like Flesh and Blood and Arcane Rising first edition and then Crew first edition. And you had obviously YouTube channels talking about it. It kind of just got put in the same category, but the people for people don't know really. I, I wouldn't say they'll forget because they just don't know. But James White and LSS were planning the law for Flesh and Blood 10 years ago. Yeah. But they were working on it for 10 years. It wasn't just a... Do you know what, boys? We can make a lot of money. Let's just make a card game. And then with, like, a lot of card games that are these kind of Kickstarter ones, they make it up as they go along. Yeah. And the problem is, what happens is when you run out of ideas and you've got writer's block, you're you're stuck. You know what I mean? So with LSS, they had a book. They had a hun- couple, multiple hundred pages, hardback law book released when the set came out. And it was like... Here's all the different lands, all these different worlds, all the different characters. There's a ton of lore. Yeah. And obviously the website gets updated regularly with new lore. We're getting new here. Like there's still classes and subclasses and talents we haven't got yet that we might not even get for another five, six sets. Yeah. And that's just how, you know, they there's a reason why they spent 10 years work on it. They they had a vision and they wanted to ensure that they could this was a long-term goal. This wasn't just a money thing. This was a, 
create a card game that's going to be here for a long period of time. Yeah, it was just a shame, I think, in terms of the release timing. That's all it was. It was a, it was a shame yeah. that it happened just at the same time that Kickstarter TCG started popping up. So it, it unfortunately kind of got... For, for anyone that didn't know it well enough, it, it unfortunately got bundled in with them, which it obviously... It, I, I've always looked at it as separate. It, like, just the cards... You, you can tell. You can tell it's not yeah. just been made up within six months by someone who's never made cards and has any experience like it, it yeah it is truly just one of the main card games that that aren't just made by some person on their own that decided to do it so yeah yeah it's just unfortunate in terms of timing for that i think something else that happened this week which a lot of people have been talking about actually is that the Pokemon Fusion Strike and Evolving Skies Alt Arts that surfaced where someone was stealing them in the manufacturing process. Oh, yeah. Which was crazy to see. Uh, even crazier to see that he's just got them in a box with no sleeves on and just flicking through them. <laughs> um, I'm actually... Obviously, it's, it's, it's completely unacceptable it's terrible news it's awful to see especially if you've opened a lot of any of those sets because you, you, it does feel like like if you've opened a case of fusion strike it, it almost would feel like you've been robbed like you've been robbed of yeah. reports, which is just awful. You'd feel a bit cheated, yeah yeah um weirdly enough though i'm actually surprised this has not happened before like during 2020 when pokemon was going mad i'm surprised it didn't happen sooner to be honest but yeah it, it's it's it horrible does, it to actually see. has happened before oh when was this that isn't, this, so this happened with the gold stars the legendary oh, dogs that, oh. yeah so that was quite a famous case so the raikou suicune and entei gold stars i believe that was the case where a loads were stolen at the time and of course i think quite a lot of them got sold off in a short period of time and those gold stars ended up crashing in price compared to the other gold stars obviously as much as the gold star could crash this was quite a few like this was a, quite a few years ago yeah. like before the hobby got sort of really really yeah. big again um but that that did happen before obviously i think it probably has happened before a lot and i question how such a large company as pokemon allows how this can happen honestly i know yeah. that i understand if it was happening with a smaller card game but pokemon is the largest card game in the world and i still don't understand how it's still happening now there's probably a lot of cases where it has happened before we just didn't know about it yeah obviously people from from the first reaction people would say is if i said this to somebody before we saw this news that just came out they would say well, you, you'd see a lot. You'd see if somebody had stolen a f 500 copies of the Umbrian V Max, but you would just sell them, right? But that's what you wouldn't do because you don't want to saturate the market. It also gives off bad vibes that why have you got so many copies? Yeah. But if you're the main seller of a card, you're not going to saturate the market. You're going to drip feed it over time. So that's probably why. And it is really scary to think, especially the Umbrian V Max, the old art. That is the most expensive, expensive modded card right now. We've seen the prices for that. It is yeah. disgusting. For how high the pop is in a ten, it is stupid. I think that I think it's a nice card, but it doesn't warrant the price. But that I think that again, that's kind of like we've discussed that before. That's the new, the way the hobby has evolved yeah. over time, and that and a lot of people, the old arts. Don't get me wrong, they're one of the best things that's happened ever in pokemon cards and i think the sword and shield era is up there with the best eras of pokemon i i have in, i've collected and enjoyed every single era on so there's not an era where i can look back and go i didn't like any of that but people regard obviously the first generations and ex era as being an e series as being the best but i would put sword and shield era up there with v series and ex era honestly because the, of the arts not just because of the alts, but the transition. You look at the whole era. I think people 
didn't like the first couple of sets because of you know we had Sun Shield, we yeah. had Rebel Clash, and we had Dance of Blaze. But even looking at those, I re- I think the V Maxes are nice. We had the we've obviously had Radiant, we've had the Amazing Rares, we've got the Trainer Gallery stuff. Like those cards are as good as anything that any card yeah. game is releasing. So I think Sword and Shield, and I think more people think it now. I think you look at Sun and Moon. Late Sun and Moon was great, the tag team sets, but early Sun and Moon was really weak. Like you had Sun and Moon base, yeah. Crimson Invasion, Burning Shadows had Ho Oh and Charizard. So, and you, you, it was very hard to pull anything out of Burning Shadows. You had Guardians Rising, you had Forbidden Light, Ultra Prism. Those sets, for the most part, are really weak sets. Whereas Sword and Shield, for me, if you say Rebel Clash is the weakest set, that's still up there with some of the best Sun and Moon sets for me. Yeah, I think, I, I do wonder, I've said this before, obviously not on a YouTube video or podcast, but I do wonder long term, because obviously Sword and Shield, that was 2020. So there was a lot of people that when the when Pokemon boomed, they went into vintage that all kind of got people got over that i guess that the new people that came in then they started looking at modern that's when we started getting champions path getting bought out because people thought yeah. they'd flip it for double the amount things like that i think potentially a lot of people came into sword and shield probably having never collected anything since base set and i think maybe long term sword and shield could hold really good value in the sense that 20 years down the line people might remember it still and be like oh remember that time when pokemon boomed and we started opening champions path and you know and and those sorts of sets and i i do wonder if if long terms that will really really help like the sword and shield era be worth like a fair amount but uh, obviously that is that is down the line that is like let's wait 10 years and see see what happens um yeah, I, sorry. I agree with you on that one. Honestly. Yeah, sorry, I back... think you're you're right on that. Oh, go on, carry on. No, no, no. Yeah, go on. I, I wanted to backtrack a little bit, but yeah, if you've got any comments on Sword and Shield, yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, I think you're right on the money with that. I think the way people talk about the first couple of eras, when you see people come back to the hobby, they talk about nostalgia and they're trying to c- collect fossil and jungle and yeah. base and Team Rocket and Gym era, the, the Neo eras, whatever. The same conversation that people have about that is exactly the same conversation people will have about Sword and Shield, because there's never been a time. Maybe you could argue X Y era with evolutions. Yeah, yeah. There's never been another time where so many people have re-entered the hobby at any period of Pokemon since the first couple of sets. But look at e- look at evolution prices. Like yeah, obviously there was tons of it. It was cheap. It was cheap for four four years after release. You could still pick it up for same price or whatever but obviously now it's a staple set and and yeah obviously it has the the part of it where it, you know it's it is a reprint of original so that is obviously quite desirable but it also has the fact that that was a point where a lot of people re-entered it and picked up evolution so yeah yeah potentially that is a good one to compare it to um, but yeah, sorry, backtracking a little bit about the old arts being stolen. You mentioned about the gold stars. How did, how was that confirmed? Like, how did that come about that it was like, oh, someone's stolen these and we found out? I know you said the price tanked a little bit on those certain cards, but what was the, yeah, yeah what was the, the news, I guess, back then? I think, well, obviously back then it was forums. So yeah. people were discussing on forums. There were a lot of photos. I believe there were photos leaked with Insider Factory of just new countless cards. The details are a bit hazy. It was years ago. Yeah. Um. I only remember it again because Anthony brought it up actually recently. We were discussing the co- the the comparison essentially. Yeah. Um. I I wanted to mention it just because obviously it has happened before. It doesn't stop it ever happening again. I would hope that they'd learn from their mistakes and maybe. This is the first time it has happened since the Gold Stars, but I mean, EX era was 17 years ago, yeah. so maybe maybe they have learned since then. And this was just a freak accident. I mean, this was 
we've only seen Fusion Strike and Evolving Sky so yeah. far. Um, the reaction at the time in the forums, obviously, I remember I was, oh, I would have been about 13, I think, maybe at the time. I remember seeing it was it was the biggest news at the time on the forums because we had never seen anything quite like that before. And they were gold stars, so they were like the cream yeah. of the crop. You get like alt arts, honestly. So, and I think you look at gold stars have held their price compared to any anything else in Pokemon. They're one rarity that has always maintained such a high price. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not like just a hollow. It's <laughs> It's, it's the i mean it makes sense why would you go for you're going to go for the rarest cards if you're doing something yeah. like that yeah i do wonder though potentially this could have happened throughout multiple eras you just don't know about it you know if you were doing something like this the last thing you want to do is post about it the, the fact that you're yeah. doing it i think that d- like, if you think about it from a point of view, like you said earlier, like, if you did this, you wouldn't want to saturate the market, sell them all at once. Also, if you did this, you wouldn't want to post that you've done it because that also puts a negative spin on that card and that price. And I think potentially yeah. that makes the card drop in price on its own, even without you listing yeah. loads. The fact that people know, it, yeah, it kind of puts them off. So I think, yeah, potentially it could have happened many times before you... You just don't know about it and yeah it's just unfortunate they obviously haven't got a, a a solution in place to prevent this which seems weird it's 2023 I, I, you think that would kind of be an easy thing to control but i mean i've got no idea in terms of how it works in the manufacturing printing process so yeah i don't know yeah it's you'd like to think that it wouldn't happen again but we don't know, honestly, as you said, we don't know what's happening behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. So just hopefully, I don't think enough were, obviously it was quite a lot of copies, so people are going to feel hard done by. Yeah. And of course, you know, if you were open up, Fusion Strike was definitely a set people talked about being very hard to pull. Yeah. Was it done with Chilling Rain as well, maybe? You know, we, we don't know, obviously. Maybe we'll know in years to come, maybe stuff will come out, but... yeah. All we can hope is it doesn't happen again because it's not really something that happens in other card games that I know of. I haven't really heard. It's probably happened with Magic before, but yeah, I'd, I'd imagine it's happened. It's just not something that's come to light and, and yeah, been known about, which yeah means it won't hurt it. So yeah, it's unfortunate to see, but very unfortunate for anyone who would have opened a lot of that set. Yeah, hopefully going forward they can do something more concrete to stop that happening. But I guess we'll see, time will tell. I think the only other thing that's happened recently since the last episode, which is why Schwartz related, this is just the last thing I had on some notes about what's come out, was that Chainsaw Man had its SP reveals. Uh, By the time this podcast is up, I probably already will have a video out going through them yeah but i know you like chainsaw man i like i know you've watched it all the same as me do you yeah it, are you going to get a box do you think when it comes to english maybe to open what, what do you think yeah i definitely will get some i i really love chainsaw man i thought it was that's i mean we talked about it weekly when we were watching yeah. it yeah it was definitely one of my favorite um anime series of modern years i definitely will get some i think I've looked at the cards. Obviously, we we spoke about it before. I, there are people that haven't liked the cards. I think some yeah. of the cards are definitely quite basic. Yeah, I agree. But there are some cards that are really pretty with some really nice, colourful backgrounds. So I will be hoping to open up some boxes of that and maybe some trial decks as well. Yeah, I think I, I like. I completely get it. There's a couple cards with no, literally no background. It's just a colour. Yeah, they could have done something. They could have just put some pattern behind it or like they did on the other cards and it would look much better but that's only three cards out of like the eight or nine so cards that were signed and i think the main thing here is that uh, like me personally i'm just grateful one we're getting chainsaw man as a set and two yeah we're getting signatures because i yeah. think i think spy x family is coming out and it doesn't have signatures i think it's hot stamps 
Um, oh, really? Yeah, so the, I, for me personally, the fact we're getting signatures, yeah, there's a, a couple of cards in there that are fairly basic, but who cares? Like, we're getting the voice actor signatures on the card. We're getting the set. It's coming out in English. They're not hot stamping it with some random icon. And yeah. there's plenty of cards in there that do look amazing. And let's be honest, this is this is like essentially the base set of Chainsaw Man, right? This isn't this isn't a show that's that's ending now. It's gonna no, it was the most popular show that came out last year, and it's going to have more volumes released. So yeah, like there's going to be plenty more cards that they make for the Chainsaw Man series. Let's be yeah. honest. There's gonna be more There'll be more than one set for sure. Yeah. So So I think yeah, a couple of cards that could have been better, but overall i'm me personally i'm happy i'll be buying it i'll be trying to collect it i think it's yeah really good to see the show come to white schwartz really yeah it definitely it seems that um they're kind of on the money now with sort of what sets are big yeah. but what what anime ips are big and they're sort of trying to get the rights to it and be like right look we're going to do a set on this and as you said the fact that we're actually getting the signatures as well which is a massive bonus i know they're there's quite a few sets now where we're only getting the stamps, which yeah. they just aren't the same thing, honestly. They're, it doesn't have the same feel as the signatures. So no. I'm excited. It looks good. And yeah, I am look forward to seeing loads of it opened on your channel. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm going to do as much as I did with Disney. I'll, I'll probably do what I normally do with sets, with sets that I like in White Shores, which is I normally buy one or two boxes I just try my luck. Sometimes I hit an SP yeah. in one box or two boxes, and then occasionally I don't, and that's fine. If I don't, you know, I get to open some, it's fun. If there's cards I want, I'll go buy them raw because obviously it's a lot cheaper to to buy the cards that you want. So I like having the best of both, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I think that's probably the best way to do it. I, I've been looking at a couple of singles for the Disney set that I might pick oh, up yeah. anyway yeah. Um, i don't want to open loads of boxes trying to search for specific yeah. cards when as you said it is just cheaper to buy the single cards that you want yeah i think obviously if you want some disney 100 singles tomorrow is the small second wave so potentially keep an eye out on buy or wherever you're looking tomorrow yeah to see uh, yeah i don't honestly i don't know i've heard it's not a it's not many boxes at all. Like I know, I know some people that only got, like they ordered ten cases. They got like one or two cases, and that was on the first wave, and it was confirmed. Like you won't be getting any on the second. So, um, okay. like we don't. Yeah, it it potentially That's is disappointing. Yeah, yeah, potentially it's super super small. But yeah, I mean, primary focus for them is obviously getting the product in Japan. I think I think a lot of people forget this is a Japanese set for japan so when there's ever yeah. a restock it's like hold on like at least half of this is going to stay in japan and be opened by yeah. you know, people in japan you, you, it's not an overseas product which is why it's hard harder to get and prices do what they do because it's just not it's not made for us unfortunately um yeah and yeah i think a lot of people forget that so but yeah potentially tomorrow you might be able to pick up a few singles if you're lucky for for cheap prices yeah i'll definitely have a look at that it, to see what cards come up cool i think that's probably it for today it's, yeah we're probably yeah. about 45 minutes in i think okay i've I, well i've spoken about everything that i remembered what happened in the last week or two yeah. i don't know about you is there anything else that's happened yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think we can wrap up. Um, obviously, thanks again, everyone, for watching. Please comment and subscribe to both of our channels. Card Crunchers podcast will be both on them, and more episodes will be coming. Yeah, really appreciate it. Anyone who's made it this far, uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next episode.